place we're going to start with the plasmancer is we're going to be painting in all of the kind of smooth black details now this includes mostly just his inner i guess it's his spine he's not really got a spine he's just a floating thing but we just basically want this entire central column to be this clean black look as well as the wrap on his spear and i think that's it so what we're going to do is we're going to use some pterodon turquoise we're going to get a nice even coat of this all over these details and we just want to whack this on like this just getting a nice solid color of pterodon turquoise and this acts as our pre-shade and also as our first highlight so we're just going to keep going like this until we've got it all covered and then we're going to come back and next up with all that pterodon turquoise applied, we're now going to take some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to colour in all of the areas that we want to be industrial black, but also all of the areas that we want to be silver. Now industrial black are areas like these joints on his arms and his fingers. And his forearms, etc. Normally there would be legs, but he has no legs. Poor guy. Uh, we also want to colour in the kind of this venting area on his on his spear, as well as the silver details, which include the top carapace up here and the blade down here. And if you need help, just check out any of the box art. For a bit of direction. And with all that done we're now going to add some black templar and what we want to do is we want to do this in two different ways. The first way is we're going to take some black templar on our brush and we're just going to paint it all over with the areas that we call the industrial black. So this is areas like the joints in his arms and his fingers and the kind of casing here on the back. We just want to leave those I guess you would call them hover engines as silver for now. So you just want to go around like this, all over these industrial black details like this. Just making sure you get a good coverage of this black over it. Like so. The other way that we're going to do it is we're going to paint this black over the pterodon turquoise that we've got here. All we want to do is we want to paint this over the flat of the panel, just leaving the edge shining through with that pterodon turquoise like that. If I demonstrate again on the next one down. Like so. You can see what that does is that adds our first edge highlight for us, taking out a bunch of the work. So you just want to go around like this. And it does take a little bit of time to do it this way, but it's totally worth it. And with that black Templar applied, the next color we're going to use is some thinned down Rune Lord brass. And this is for all the remaining metallic details that we haven't got a color on. Talking about his floaty stuff here, the kind of armor on his arm, his, uh, his carapace, his chest, as well as the kind of remaining decorative features of the staff. So areas like down here. We want to leave that ball there and we want to leave all of the kind of the blade workings. We want to cover over this bit just here and here, and here, and here, and all of this. So we want to get all of that coloured, and then we'll come back. And with all of that done, it's now time to apply some shades to the miniature. Now the first colour we're going to use is Wildwood, and we're going to use this all over these front hanging trails, just on there. And we use straight out the pot, but we don't want to use loads at a time. We want this to kind of, we still, we don't want to just completely drown 
these details in the wildwood like this because we want a nice warm bronze so just like use your brush to just kind of sweep away any large dark pools that may happen when you're doing this like that and next up with that wildwood applied we're going to take some cryptic armor shade gloss and we're going to use this all over the remaining contrails as well as on the workings of the spear because we want these to be nice and shiny and with that cryptic armor shade gloss applied we're now going to take some basilicanum gray we're going to use this all over the silver details. So that includes areas like the interior of these cape trails, but also on his back, on his beard, I guess it's their beard, uh, and anywhere kind of areas that you've left just silver for now. I'm going to get this basilicanum grey all over those areas like this. And then next up, we're going to create a roughly six parts contrast medium, one part wildwood and one part agarost dunes mix. And this is for all the remaining bronze details. So areas like his chest. Armour. And his arms. And his hand. Anywhere that we haven't already added the other two shades. And with all those shades applied, it's now time to add some highlights. And we're going to start with Canoptec Alloy. And we want to use this to highlight all of the bronze areas and the back parts of the hanging cape contrails type stuff. Like this. And we just want to hit every single edge with this Canoptec alloy. And then we'll come back. We don't want to do the front parts. So we're going to, hide, we're going to do something slightly different to them. So these, these two hanging bits here. And next up, with all that Canoptec alloy applied, we're now going to highlight all of the silver details. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Iron Hand Steel. And what we want to do is we want to highlight all of the edges of all the silver. But we also want to do it this time so we want to highlight all of those industrial black areas that we painted in. So areas like his joints, his fingers, all that kind of stuff. So like around here, we just want to pick out the edges. Like this with the iron hand steel. And with all of those highlights applied, he's starting to look pretty cool. So all that's left to do is to do these front bits. Now what we want to do is we want to take a small amount, just keeping with iron hand steel, take a small amount on a dry brush and then on a bit of tissue paper we want to do this. We want to keep stippling it on until we get an effect that we're happy with, kind of like, like this bit here. And then on these bits, we just want to brace it with our finger, we just want to start stippling this iron hand steel all up and down these areas. And the reason for this is because when you look at the box art, it does just kind of look like this worn out silver. Like that, you can see it gives you this really interesting final effect on there. Brace it with my finger a little bit again. Just keep stippling it until you're happy with how it looks. And then lastly, just to finish these areas off, we want to use a small amount of storm hose silver just to highlight the outside edges, just to give it like a degree of sharpness. Like that. And with all of that done, it's now time to work on both the blade 
and also these syringes on his back. Now the colour we're going to be using is Warp Lightning. And what we want to do, first and foremost, we're going to work here on the syringes. So what we want to do is we want to fill in the middle area as well as the middle line and just kind of paint a little bit over the edge. like that. So we get this green central area. I want to do this across all of these. So do one more. Like that. And I want to do it on both sides. So you've got this side and you've got the inside and you've got that side as well. Similarly, up here on the blade, what we want to do is we want to take a fair dollop of this on our brush and we want to paint a nice smooth coat of this warp lightning all over these areas. So like up here, we want to just make contact with the model and pull it down in one smooth stroke. We want to go around the entire of this central area like this with the warp lightning. You always want to just kind of finish a section before you move on, just to make sure that the contrast paint stays wet, so that you can move it around a little bit easier. And kind of pick up any dark splodges that you might have left, like like that. So moving on the blade, we just want to, hopefully they're designed in sections, so we just want to make contact by the recess and pull it down. Make sure we block that in and pull it down with this warp lightning. Like this. So you want to go around covering all these areas. Don't worry about the glowing orbs for his eye and his staff at the bottom. They're going to be a different colour. And once all that warp lightning is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. And this is just for those vials or syringes on his back. And what we want to do is we want to take the black Templar, take a little bit on our brush, and we want to paint this over the flat of the syringe or vial, just leaving the edge and the recess like that. I'll demonstrate it again on the other side so you can see the full effect. Take the Black Templar, just on the flat, leaving the edge and the recess with the green still shining through. And it gives you this lovely glowing green vial effect. Like that. And you just want to do this across all of these vials, and then we'll come back. With those vials on his back done, we've now got this really lovely glowing effect going on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish off the blade. And we're just going to start by using some Orc Flesh. What we want to do is we want to grab some on our brush. Not very much. And we just want to pick areas to add this extra shading. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a brush stroke of this Orc Flesh going down this area of the blade. Like that. And grab a little bit more. We're going to do a brush stroke of this orc flesh going down this side of the blade. Like that. And similarly down here at the bottom. Like so. Actually, add a little bit more flesh here just to strengthen that colour out a bit more. We want to do the same thing on the other side. And once that all flesh is dry, what we want to do is we want to take a really small amount of some thinned down con Dark Angels Green. And I've done Dark Angels Green two, so two to one contrast medium to Dark Angels Green. We effectively want to do the same thing again 
that we've just done with the awkward edge where we make contact with the model and pull it down, but we don't want to do the whole of these darker areas. We just want to do kind of a tip like that and a darker area closer to the centre of the blade like that. And similarly again down here and similarly here and like we just want to do some dark angels green at the top here like that. And once that Dark Angels mix is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the sharp edges of the blade using some thinned down all through in grey. And we want to be very careful here. We don't want to use loads. It must kind of just be quite a subtle highlight. We are going to do a glaze after this to bring it all together. But we don't want like a, a big, bright, white, ugly highlight but trust me it's worth it just take your time and just go very carefully and next up with that and grey highlight applied to the blade what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part Achillean green mix it's going to create this really thin glaze and then we just want to paint this all over where we've done those blends like this. Just to pull it all together and to take the edge off those highlights. And with that Achillean green glaze applied, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some thin down Corax white. And this is to color in all of the glowing bits, like this orb down here on his staff and his eye. And the cable. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Tesseract Glow, and this is for the glowing orbs. Just want to use this on his eye, just here. As well as on the one on his staff. And once that Tesseract glow is dry, we're going to take some Orc Flesh. I'm going to paint this all over that cable that's in there. It's a little too much. Contact with the model at one end and just put it down in one big brush stroke. Like that. And next up, just to finish off that cable, we're going to take a small amount of Black Templar. And we want to run it down the inside track, or the outside track, I should say, facing out so we get this nice little green and black cable. So we're gonna run, like I said, we just wanna run it like this along the outside, like that. And if you can, get your brush in there and do the inside area as well to give us a nice thin green line going along that cable. And lastly, just to finish him off, we want to use a small amount of Fenrisian grey just to highlight the sharpest areas on that soft black that we did right at the beginning and forgot to do. So we say just here, we're just picking out the sharpest corners on the spine and like a little bit of each of the vertebrae like this and with that done all that's left to do is to finish off his base uh, and i'm going to be doing this in the same style as the way i've done the rest of the indomitus set so you can either check out the tutorial on how to paint necron warriors or you can check out the how to paint the canoptic reanimator as that covers how to do that that sort of silver piping and the rest of the bits on this base and there you have it, the Plasmancer is all done. It's a really cool model. I, I say this about every single model, I don't think I've painted a non-cool one, but this one is also really cool. 
Um, yeah, I we know that this is the first in a raft of Mansa characters. Or well, they're Cryptex, I can't remember. Um, somebody tell me in the comments. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, as one of a new range of new characters with the Necrons, I think he's really, really, really awesome. It's, uh, you know, in a race of crotchety old men, this one looks like the crotchetiest and oldest of them. So, yeah, it really, uh, really, it's just really, really awesome. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.